So this is the part of the presentation where the rubber hits the road. I'm going to build a real robot in real time and hopefully I can pull it off. Uh, but there's certainly no promises being made. Uh, the website that I'm going to be uh, basing my model on is from a site called robots to dos uh, They've been kind enough to give me permission to uh, use their design for their EV3 5-Minute Bot. And it's called the 5-Minute Bot because allegedly it can be built in 5 minutes. <laughs> we'll see if I'm able to work that fast. What we'll wind up with though um, is essentially a simple uh, chassis here with two wheels and a caster wheel here at the back. Okay, so let's get started. I'm in LEGO Digital Designer. I'm going to select the Mindstorms tab and I'm going to go into the free build. Now the kit that we're going to be working from happens to be the Mindstorms EV3 retail kit. So you'll recall in the previous video that we were able to set filters. I am once again going to do that. I'm going to go down here to the bottom left hand corner where it says filter bricks by boxes and I'm going to select this 31313 Mindstorms EV3. That is the retail edition of the Mindstorms kit and it will have all the pieces that we need to build both the physical model and its simulated counterpart. You can see that when I apply the filter, of course, uh, my palette becomes limited, so that's good. And let's go back to the site here for a second to see what it is that we're going to be doing. So let's take a look at the first picture here. Uh, what we wind up with is a tire with rim, uh, a couple of friction pegs, some connector pegs, a Technic beam. Looks like it's five holes if I can see in the dark here. Uh, and then I have another L-shaped Technic beam. My best guess is that this is a seven millimeter uh, cross axle and of course our EV3 motor. So what I'm gonna find, what I'm gonna do rather is I'm gonna try and recreate this scene. I find that it's easiest to work in LDD when I try and make my 3D model look like these pictures. So let's go into LDD and find these parts. I have here of course my motor. And I have here, let's see, I had at least two friction pegs, two connector pegs. I believe I had a five hole Technic beam. So let's pick this guy out here. I had an L beam and I just need to go and check my bearings here. This L shaped beam looks like it's a five by three. So I'm gonna go and find that. Uh, what do we got here? Five by three L beam. Here we go. Three by five. And then I had two red bushes. So let's find my bushes. Uh, these guys over here, bush for Crocs saxle. And again, I'll just hit C here to make a copy. And then I had a seven millimeter cross axle. So let's use this. Okay, and I'm gonna make a couple of adjustments here just so we can do a before and after. Uh, so let's set this up here. And sometimes you gotta fight with these pieces in uh, LDD when you're working with, uh, when you're working with the parts. Uh, let's do this. Oh, I'm missing my tire. So let me grab my uh, rim. And I'm gonna need my tire. And let's take a look at my before and after here. Okay, so it looks like we have the first picture in our model built. What we're gonna do next is I'm just gonna go on down to the second picture. Let's take a look at what's happening here. So this is the second photo and we're going to put the cross axle in through the tire. Here's my two red bushes and then we're going to build some sub assemblies here that my guess is are going to be used to connect the uh, tire to the motor. So what we're going to do is before doing that I'm going to introduce you guys to a concept called grouping. 
Now, one of the things we're going to find as we build our model is that it becomes really difficult to move a collection of pieces together uh, when they are not grouped. So let's just see, for example, if I wanted to move this tire and rim, watch what happens. You can see that the rim is not moving with the tire. So what I actually want to do is I want to make a window selection like this. And I'm going to go Control G to create a group. You can see here on our brick palette that there's a tab over here that says Groups. And we can see that when we do that, I now get a group. And it looks like I'm missing my tire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the tire. And I'm going to hit this green button here to add selection to group. And now with the group selected, I can move both the tire and rim as one assembly. So it's an incredibly useful tool. Highly recommend that you get into the habit of grouping all of your sub-assemblies. So we're going to take our grouped tire and rim and I'll put it upright. I'm going to take my cross axle here and just give it a poke through the middle. I'm going to add my, uh, my bushes here just to keep my tire together. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to add the bushes and the axle uh, to the grouped tire. So let's click on here my axle. I'm going to hit group and then I'm going to click on the red uh, bushes here so you can see I have one selected and then I have the other selected on the other side and I'm going to hit add selection to group. And of course as we modify our group we can see that our preview of it here in the grouped palette uh, changes so like that always stays current. Next I'm going to take my Technic beam and my two connector pegs and I'm gonna set them up like so and what do you think we want to do at this point in the game of course we want to group so let's make another group and then lastly here I'm gonna take my L beam and I'm gonna add these two friction pegs here to the base of the L beam and of course we'll do another group. So we'll wind up here with three groups and a motor. Okay. So let's now put this all together. I'm going to take my motor, put it upright. I'm going to grab the grouped uh, tire rim and cross axle and I'm going to connect it to the one side of my motor. And then I'm going to take these two other assemblies and also connect them to my motor. And this is going to allow us later on to be able to mount um, these motors to our EV3 Intelligent Brick. So let's just put this up here. And then I'll take this second assembly and do something like this. There we go. And at this point, we're going to make uh, an even larger group because now we want to be able to work with this motor, wheel, axle, and these other elements as one big block. So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to go Control G to group. You can see that when I do that, uh, my earlier groups have disappeared, so I can just delete them. It'll clean up my palette a little bit. And now if we were to do a comparison here, we have our uh, first motor uh, assembly with wheel and uh, connecting bricks. So of course we're going to want to do this again for the other side of the robot. So I'm going to make a big window selection and I'm going to press the C key to clone what I've just built. And of course we're going to make a couple of adjustments because uh, all of these elements need to be flipped around. So let's take my wheel, let's move it over here. Actually let's do this. Okay, so we have our wheel now facing the other way. And we just need to take these connecting bricks here and shuffle them over so that they're facing the other side. Of 
let's just see if I have the right holes picked. I have two from the top. And so that means that this guy needs to change. Actually, that might have been okay. Okay, perfect. I was wondering when I was able, when I was gonna be able to get that done. Uh, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna create another group. So now I have two groups, uh, each of my motor assemblies. I'm going to come back into my brick section here, and I'm gonna find my intelligent brick. So my intelligent brick is this thing over here. And this is basically the computer that's going to be driving our creation. Of course, what I can do here is we can actually create uh, subgroups within a group, which is just an organizational structure. Um, so let's take this group here. I'm going to make a group of my intelligent brick. And I'm going to take each of these motor assemblies, and I'm going to make them subgroups of the intelligent brick. And this just gives this um, a little bit more of, a, uh, of an organizational structure, like I said. You, this step is completely optional. Uh, however, I do find that when I'm building, um, life's a lot easier if I use groups, so I highly encourage you using them. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these empty groups. And it looks like we just need the back um, caster wheel that we, we still need to build. So let's see how we're holding up here on the website. I'm going to step back. And we're at this stage in the game here. So what do we need here? Uh, a 13 hole, it looks like, Technic Beam and two friction pegs. So I'm going to go back into my bricks. I'm going to find my 13M beam. I'm going to need two friction pegs. So let's come here and find two of these black pegs. And where do these pegs go? Let's see. Okay, so we're going to put each peg here at the end of the beam. So let me grab one of these. And I'm going to grab a second. And of course, what are we going to do? We're going to group. So I'm going to make a group. And you can see here that now uh, we basically have two top level groups. I have my robot assembly and then I have this Technic beam with two pegs. Okay, next up. We're going to take the beam and we're going to put it uh, to the back of the robot. And this is just a brace that's going to add some stability uh, to our model. So I'm going to grab my robot here and I've selected the top level group. And I'm just going to put it on its back just like this. I'm going to grab my model, come to the back, and I'm going to snap these pieces together like so. And at this point, because this Technic Beam with friction pegs is now attached to my robot, I'm going to make it a subgroup of the robot. Actually, let's do this. Okay, uh, next up. We're going to need two L-shaped beams and what looks like a seven-holed um, Technic beam and six fric friction pegs. So let's go back to my bricks. Find my two L-shaped beams. So I have my two by four beam. I have a three by five here. And then I have Oh, did it, what did we say here? Three, six, I have seven holes for the Technic Beam. So it's this guy here, 7M. Next, I we will add the six friction pegs. So let's go here and add my six pegs. And I'm just going to use the C tool here to make a cloned copy. So I have my first set of three, my second set of three, and we're done. And here's what we're going to be doing with those two L-shaped beams and the one Technic beam we're going to be putting in our pegs like so. So let me set that up and grab a friction peg. I'm going to put it here on the end. Grab another friction peg, put it here on the end. And then grab these two guys 
and I'm going to give this a flip because basically what you can't see is I'm trying to mirror the picture on the website. So I got to play a little bit here with the positioning, but eventually I do get it right. Okay, I'm going to grab these two guys and I got these two guys like so. And in a second here, we're going to take a look at our photo to see how we did. And of course, this would be a great time to create some groups. So I'm going to create a group from this. I'm going to create a group from this second set of bricks. And I'm going to create a group from this third set of bricks. So let's go back to my groups here and move some of these pieces around so I can recreate my picture. Okay, let's see how he did. Not too shabby. Okay, so next up we're going to take these three groups and turn them into a larger assembly. So let's take my Technic beam here and just move it about. I'm going to take my 3x5 here and move it around. And then I'm going to take this last beam here and move it around like so. Uh, let's see what we're doing here. Ta-da! Okay, awesome. I love it when things work out. Let's see how we made out. So, okay, so this is now our larger sub-assembly. We're going to be using this to connect our um, back caster wheel to the main chassis of the robot. So, again, you know that I love to group, so let's make a group. And I can do a little bit of house cleaning here and get rid of some of these empty groups here that are now cluttering my brick palette. So let's take this big group and do this. Great. So you can see how this is going to come together, that this is going to be the one uh, side that's holding our uh, caster wheel. And then we're going to have a mirrored uh, side here doing the same thing. So let's select my group. I'm going to hit the C tool to create a clone. And I just need to invert some of these pieces so that I can make the connection on the other side. So let's do this. And while we're doing that, I'm going to create my group. Control G to create the group. And let's, whoops. Let's see what's happening here. I've got to take these pieces and move them as well. Awesome, that looks pretty good. So let's take my group, so I'm gonna click on it and I'm just gonna dock it here to the side, other side of my robot. And we're settled. So let's now take these pieces here and add them as subgroups of our existing robot. And then I'm going to clean up these empty groups. Great. Okay, so we're on the home stretch here. Let's just take a look at how this caster wheel is built. 
So again, we're just using a simple rim. Um, I'm going to guess that this is a 9M uh, uh, cross axle, and I have two bushes to connect the rim to the axle, like so. So let's do it. I'm going to come back to my bricks, and I'm going to create my rim. This is my rim. I'm going to find my 9mm cross axle here. So let's go into here and look for the axle. It says 9M, which we can see here. I'm going to thread this through my rim. And to the degree possible, we want the rim to be centered. Great. And then I'm going to add my two connecting bushes here. And again, these are just going to ensure that the rim doesn't wobble around when it's uh, rolling. So it's going to keep this all firm and together. And of course, this would be a great time to group. So I'm going to create another group. If you only remember one thing from this video, remember to hit Control G and group. Group and group often. Um, Let's see, it looks like my wheel's missing from my group, so I'm going to add it here. And now I'm going to take this whole assembly and I'm just going to snap it in through the back like so. Of course, this would be a great time to add this sub-assembly to our chassis. So with the group selected, I'm going to add it as a sub-assembly. And I can delete my empty group. Let's give this thing a spin, flip the turtle on its back. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay, so believe it or not, I don't think that was five minutes, probably a little over 20, but uh, you'll get better at it. Now before we leave, I just want to show you one really neat trick. And this is something in LDD that I've noticed a lot of people aren't really even aware of. But if there's going to be uh, sub-assemblies in your robot that you're going to be using over and over again, say for example uh, this motor assembly with the wheel, that's probably something I'm going to want to use again in other projects. What I can do is actually create a template. It's the third tab here in my palette. So let's grab one of these. And I'm going to go to the templates here and I'm going to create a template. And then I'm going to go to my other uh, motor wheel assembly and then create a second template. And what's special about templates and what makes them different from groups is that they persist um, even after we close LEGO Digital Designer. So the next time I start a new project, I'll actually be able to use these templates and they'll be ready built for me. So let's save our robot. It's going to go File, Save As. And I call this my shiny new robot. Go to Desktop hit save and let's create a new project so let's pretend that we're going to exit out of Lego Digital Designer come back and see if our templates are still there waiting for us so here I'm gonna go to Mindstorms tab I'm gonna create a new project and now if I was gonna create a new robot here under templates we can see that both of my wheel assemblies are here and uh, they are already built so it's a great time-saving measure in the next video, we'll be taking a look at some of the additional uh, pieces of functionality that we still have remaining to cover, uh, such as the build tab and the build of materials. We'll also discuss the process for importing our robot into the virtual robotics toolkit so it becomes a living, breathing, physics-enabled simulation. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for joining me.